help for the vision. Ooh, I love it. But I told you it was yummy, right? Help for the vision. If you study, if you took time to study, especially from the beginning up to now, I'm seeing it clearly now that this is a running team. We need help for the vision. Apostle Paul could not be Apostle Paul without the input of who? Ananias. And that was not the end. Throughout his life, when I was writing the name Ananias, I literally started it with a B. And I'm like, no, it's not a B. And then I remember that. He, that's when that he opened my understanding to see that he has help for us at all levels of our vision. Ooh, I told you it was yummy. There is help for the vision at every single level. Mm. When it was Paul's time to step in, he brought Ananias. When he had to run the whole course, he brought in Barnabas. Towards the end, he had to give him fresh blood. Silas, <laughs> Timothy, all these great guys, they came in. Oh, John Mark. Well, thank God for John Mark. It is important to know that in this kingdom, there is a protocol. It's good we understand how to function in the kingdom. When we understand how to function in the kingdom and choose the kingdom approach, life will always be sweet. You need help. I need help. We need to humble ourselves and receive the help we need. We need to ask for the help we need so we can run with. There are helpers, but they only show up. There are what? There are helpers. But they only show up when we choose to see and to run with our vision. Mm -hmm. Let's back up and look at the entire time we've studied so far. Let's start with um, the prophet Elijah. Do you realize that he had help? He kept praying. He said, go and look. He prayed. He said, go and look. Let's come to Mama Deborah. Mm. She didn't even, she wasn't the one that brought the, 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 the final victory. She got the vision. But then that vision needed divine or vision helpers. Before we continue, I want to ask a question. Are you a helper in somebody's vision or you're a distraction? All right, he said, um, no, how about your own vision? Are you a helper in your own vision as to have you decided to see the vision that he has for your life? Or you are in the market, you are everywhere. You're religious. You're telling everybody, yeah, amen, glory to God. But you're not doing anything. Go back and listen to the message in the morning. I've listened to the messages in this series already. I did. Oh my goodness, they are yummy. This is the third one. Help for the vision. Be humble enough to ask for help. Now we want to look at this help from both angles. Number one, as somebody needing help, we need help for the vision. No matter what you think you know, when you get a vision from the Lord, can we settle it? You're not going to be the only one to carry that vision from point A to Z. You're going to be one of those. You're going to be the pivoter, but not the entire player or the five players of that volleyball team. I know your understanding is too simple. No matter what you know, please remind yourself that you need help. You need help. We want to flip the coin the other side. Can we be humble enough to help somebody who has located their vision? 
that he expects us to help other people fulfill their vision. And did you see that in the life of Paul and Ananias? But how do you identify somebody you can help? Mm -hmm. That's a question because the truth is not everybody can be helped, no matter how big their vision is. My goodness, I have met some wonderful visionaries. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Extremely divine visions, big, great visions. But can I tell you, you could literally stand distracted, distracted, distracted a million times and you'll be correct. They know the vision. They can articulate the vision, but they are not doing anything. Their day-to-day -day life is not structured according to that vision. Mm -hmm. Some people have, but they are postponing it in the future. To the future. Mm -hmm. They need help, right? When we identify this, what do we do? We come in to help. But can you help everybody? No. How do you know that somebody truly needs help? Not because they said it. Number one, that is going to lead you to them. Do you think Paul could have convinced Barnabas that he, that is born again? Oh my God, you're not. Barnabas will run for his dear life. I like this example. You know, sometimes we want to help people. It's like the scenario of a drowning man. If a drowning man does not really need help, if you try to help them, they will help you drown. We need to know who needs help. How can we know if somebody needs help? Number one, daddy will lead us to them or he will lead them to us. They will tell you, daddy brought me to you. They'll tell you things like, oh, I've been praying for a mentor. Oh my God, you're my mentor. I just found you. Or when you meet them, you say, oh, I've been praying that daddy should bring somebody for me to help. How will you know that this is somebody you can help in their vision? Number two, they will be willing to be helped. Thank you. Imagine that Ananias went to Saul, to Paul, or to Saul before he became Paul, and said everything he said in Acts chapter 9. And Paul is like, I don't need that. Hello? You know we do that? You might not say it with your words, but your actions could be saying, I don't need help. You might be like that two-year-old. Have you seen two-year-old children? Oh, Sister Juliet, I hope you don't do this. They take their left surface and they put it on the right feet. The parents must be loving it because this is, the re this is reality. You say, baby, get changed your shoes. said, no. So you didn't put your shoe correct. No, mommy, this is right. Most of the time, you know, it's childishness, right? But the question is, how long will you stay in babyhood? You can run this vision. You can choose to receive help and run with your vision. If they are willing to receive help, then you can help them. Now, this is, this is a caution because listening to a message like this, help for the vision, you're like, ah, oh, I'm here, help for the vision. You will be frustrated to realize that not everybody needs your help. Can you, can you dictate where your help is needed? Some of us, our help is needed, uh, uh, let's say, uh, towards the right. But we are here towards the left, begging for people to take help, and they don't want. One of my, my, my spiritual children, it was their birthday. He wrote me a text, and he said, Mom, this is my birthday. Can you pray for me? Speak a word. Mommy, pray for me. Speak a word. Correct me. Rebuke me. Say anything that he says. I say, there are some, if you rebuke them, bye, dot-com relationships, they are gone. But somebody is asked, even on their birthday, to say anything God puts on your mind. I say, Father, there are children like this. These are the kind I like. These ones will go far. Not the ones that, even if you preach, they interpret the message as an attack. It's, the, it's a matter of time. One day they will tell you, you know the day you were saying this, you were saying it to me. And I'm like, wait. We are still at this level. When are we going to make progress? You, 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 you heard me. Never. Never live an idle life. 
choose to be productive. That's point number three. How do you know somebody who needs help? Number three, they are never idle. They are productive. Can I tell you the truth? If you need help, don't be idle. If you need help, don't sit on your hands. One of the ways to know somebody who needs help is that they are not sitting on their hands. Mm. They are productive. You want people to help you, they should help you seeing you doing the job. Some of us, we've sat on prophetic words that would have bring deliverance to nations, beginning from your family, but you sat on it. Help for the vision is not for people like that. That is for those who want to give help. How about the other side? You want to help somebody who is not going anywhere. This one is more particular maybe to wives. Your husband has decided to be a mediocre. How are you going to help him? There's no vision for your family. You're going to join him and go to hell? You're going to live a miserable life on earth because you married wrong, in quote, or you married at a time where you don't understand that marriage is a whole divine project? Okay, the man don't have a vision. So what's the vision of daddy for your own life then? Hmm? What's the vision of daddy for your family? The man don't have a vision for the family. How about you have one for yourself at least? Are we understanding? If somebody is idle, you cannot help them. You can't. You're going to struggle. As we run off, in this kingdom, there is help for the vision. There is what? Help for the vision. Our Lord Jesus needed help. Look at when he was about to die. Somebody had to help him carry his cross. Do you see how much help is available? What if Jesus sat in Nazareth and said, I'm not going, I'm not going anywhere. Nobody will help him carry the cross. Look at the disciples. They made it as a team. You need a team. But you have to check the team. Number one, did daddy lead you to it? Are these people willing to walk? Do they need your help? Are they actually doing anything? You don't want to waste your life. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you. Help us. Help us so we can help others. Help us to be, a, to be helpers where we are needed. And help us to stay out of situations, relationship, projects that we are not needed. Wisdom to discern and to do correct in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.